Hey, and welcome to another thrilling, exciting adventure of uh, the James Show. Uh, Stacy decided to go to bed, otherwise she'd be here. But uh, what are we going to talk about today? Um, now that the Doctor Who season's over and they've announced a new Doctor, we're going to talk a little bit about Doctor Who. Um, Destiny Beta just came out, so... Oh, well, just. It's almost over now. Talk a little bit about that hype. we got a loot crate for you. Going to be looking at a game called Yonder. And we're also going to be looking at a uh, board game I got called Bears vs. Babies. All on this exciting episode of The James Show. So first... Let's talk about Bears vs. Babies. It's a board game um, made by guys from The Oatmeal, and uh, they also made another fun game called Exploding Kittens. And I kickstarted it, and it came out of a lovely box. Ta -da. And the first thing I do when I open it is I see on the receipt on the top is a comic. Now you can't, maybe, yeah, you maybe can't read this. It says, So the other day, I was walking down Gatehouse Way. Guess who I ran into? James Grant. That's me. Yeah, doxing away. It was awful. The Grants are the worst. They are basically squishy mo fart monsters from Virginia Beach. Avoid them at all costs. So that was very nice of them to include a lovely comic about how I should be avoided at all costs. What else came in the box? A handy playmat. I got the Not Safe for Work expansion pack. And what is included in this? This pack contains 30 Not Safe for Work cards for fun, one instruction manual for guidance, and one condom for explosive love juice. No, it really says that. And yes, there really was one. Use this or the babies win. And then of course there's use birth control. F you babies. It came in a fun fuzzy box with a little thingy on it. And uh, the box itself had has plenty of room to grow for more cards. And here are the backs of the cards. Bears vs. Babies. Now, what is the point of the game? Well, the point of Bears vs. Babies is to Build the best bear slash monster to fight off the hordes of babies. It starts off with, you need a head. Here's a head. A manatee. Uh, and from there, you can build other things onto it, like a manatee wearing a festive turtleneck. Let's see if I can find good legs. on squid legs. And of course this, as you see, this body has little arms, so you can in fact attach arms to him to make him stronger. Each of the cards has a little number in the corner that denotes its strength. And you'll notice the arm has a little symbol down here in the bottom right here. That means that you can attach a tool to the arm. Let's see if I can find a tool for you. Uh, of course, now I'm going to have trouble finding a tool, right? Ah! Intravenous caffeine drip. And this one particular one lets you take an extra action on your turns. So you build these monsters up, fight off babies, and at the end of the game, whoever's killed the most points in babies wins. Now, bears are extra special. Bear heads. Uh, because there are three types of babies. Sky, for instance, here's a sky. There's also land and sea. Normally, each head deals with a certain type of baby. So here you see the Velociraptor head. He deals with land babies. Bears have a little rainbow. They can deal with all babies. So there's that. Um, there are other effect cards in the game that can change things. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Ah, dismember, for instance. You can uh, remove a part 
from a uh, your own monster for some reason, or another person's monster. Say their head so they can't fight, that sort of stuff. Um, basics of the game are pretty simple. Depending on the number of players is how many actions you get every turn. There's no limit to your hand size. You start with a hand of five. Uh, one bearing and four other cards. On your turn, you get a set number of actions. And we played a three-player game, so everyone got three. What is an action? Well, you can draw a card for an action. You can play a card for an action. That's it. Um, there are two other things you can do. You can sacrifice all your actions to make the babies from one of the two, three regions attack, and that's how you, you know, kill them and get points. Or you can sacrifice all your turns to draw a card from the discard pile. It's face up, so you get to draw it. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. Draw cards, play cards. You got a set number of actions. Certain things will, of course, give you more actions, like that caffeinated machine thing. Uh, it's a fun and silly game. If you know anything about Exploded Kitties or the Oatmeal, you'd know that it's a silly, silly place. Um, we got the Not Safe for Work pack, so it's got strange things like uh, the Peanicorn. It's a unicorn with a penis instead of a regular horn. Um, and other exciting things. I uh, highly recommend the game if you haven't gotten it yet and you like that sort of thing. Um, or if you played Exploding Kittens and you liked it, I would suggest getting it. And, um, you know, it should be in retail couple months, you know, it loot crate, or loot crate, geez, uh, Kickstarter, so we got it ahead of time. So, uh, check it out. Bears versus babies. So, um, next, there we go. So let's talk about Doctor Who. Um, this season was the last season for the current Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, and he's the 12th slash 13th Doctor, depending on how you want to count. Um, he's the first Doctor in the new set of regenerations that he that they got, and uh, I gave him at the end of the Matt Smith era. Um, and um, I like the Doctor's companions this time, uh, especially the Bill character. She's uh, she's a pretty cool girl. Um, spoilers if I accidentally go into that. It's... Um, the last two episodes were really kind of a, a full circle kind of thing. They were wiping the slate clean for one, because the current showrunner is leaving and a new guy is going to be taking his place. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they did a couple of, uh, of throwbacks to the early, early Doctors. Um, for starters, they had to face the Cybermen. It's Doctor, one of the Doctors' very common enemies. Uh, but they were Mondasian Cybermen, which was actually the first Cybermen that the first Doctor encountered. And in fact, caused the Doctor to have a regeneration. It was the first regeneration was on the Cybermen. So it's interesting that the uh, end of this uh, Doctor Who, this Doctor's last adventure was on the Mondasian Cybermen. But because this was the first regeneration of the new set, so he's almost like the first Doctor again. And even more interesting, at the very, very end of this, shh, there's someone in the other room who hasn't seen it yet, when the Doctor's about to regenerate, also spoiler alert for the next whatever, he's trying to stop from regeneration, and he runs into the first Doctor again. He runs into himself, but it's the first Doctor. Granted, it's not the same actor, because uh, he's passed on, but it's someone who looks fairly similar, so this is the first Doctor of the new regeneration, basically meeting the first Doctor of his previous regenerations. And that's going to be the Christmas episode, so super hyped for that. Um, of course, Bill is lost in this. Um, she doesn't... Uh, I won't go into it in details, but... Bill's no longer with the Doctor, and uh, neither is his other companion, whose name escapes me now. And uh, he was the actor in Little Britain and all kinds of stuff. Bald guy, glasses. Um, yeah, I know. I'll think about his name as I walk away. Matthew something or other, maybe. Gosh, only knows. Um, anyhow, and of course, it's also been hyped up and announced all over the place that the next Doctor will be a woman. Uh, playing the Doctor, so that should be interesting. I wonder if she... I think they've already mentioned it, but I haven't looked it up yet. They're, they're going to have a woman companion or a male, com you know, man companion. I think I heard that he's, she's going to have a man, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they've been pushing toward, like, the last two seasons with Missy, the master, turned into a, um, a woman. And then, you know, there's been little quotes and little quips about it. Um... So, you know, we'll see how it works out. Uh, should be fun and exciting stuff. Uh, Christmas episodes should be sweet. And, you know, six months. And then six months after that, we'll be the uh, new Doctor again. 
Can't wait. Should be cool. I will definitely have to check it out. Overall, this season, I like the season a lot. This was one of, probably one of my favorite seasons overall, but that's partially because I really, really, Peter Capaldi was, was a pretty good doctor. Um, a little bit older and more mature, which I honestly kind of think I like overall in the doctors. A little bit older and more serious. Um, both David Tennant and Matt Smith were kind of pretty boys, and this didn't really feel doctory to me. Um, and then, like I said, I love Bill. Bill's probably my top, like, two companions. I don't know who tops her. Maybe, uh... Damn, what's her name now? I'm just out of it. Uh, red-headed girl who was not interested in the doctor at all. Uh, Donna. That's right, Donna. Donna I liked a lot, too. Uh, both of them really strong characters who had no romantic possible attachment to the character. Uh, I guess maybe that maybe helps me out on them. There's no possible, you know, romancy stuff. Uh, Bill's the same way. Bill doesn't have any sort of romance interest in the Doctor, which is cool. Anyhow, this season of Doctor Who I liked. It's one of my favorites. Check it out. So let us play a game. We're going to be playing a game called Yonder, the Cloud Chronicles. It's um, kind of a farny kind of game. I think like Stardew Valley, that sort of thing. There doesn't appear to be any fighting, per se. Uh, it's a very pretty game. Uh, looks like it was made with Unity. Seems pretty cool. So um, let me get my sun sunglasses on. And let's check this bad boy out. So here we are. And wonderful yonder gem. Here's my guy. I got myself some glasses and stuff. Yeah, mine is cool, sweet, awesome. I got a little pixie friend. This is a farm which I just established. I don't really know what I can do with it yet. But as I said, the game is very pretty. It's a, uh, you know, kind of a cutesy art style, but the sort of games they always are. guy he was helping me. Gonna hire him as a farm hand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, he's not quite ready to uh put the farm hand for me yet. That, that guides me to my quest, so I need to speak to Master Lo. That's the overall quest I'm currently doing now. You can see there's a exclamation point, this is the quest up here. Pick up stuff. Can bash stuff. Ooh, seeds for containers. Uh, oh, plant stuff. See, chopped down trees, you can see how I originally got a, a little cow for my farm was I fed him. Otherwise, these guys don't like me too much. They're like, eh, I don't know about you. Let's go head on up to uh, no multiplayer if you're thinking. As far as I've seen, no multiplayer. So, head on up. Say, hey, Master Lo. Ooh. Well done, I hope you're feeling a bit more subtle now. Go to sleep. The world is called Gamma. Yeah. I am apparently the Sprite Seer. Uh, this is my homeland from a long time ago. It's actually uh, one of those, you know, homeland hidden in the mist. And I guide this ship back to it, and it wrecks. But uh, now I'm here, and I don't really know what's going on on the island because I've been gone for a long time. The origin of the Merc. Um, around the island, there's these dark places that you can't walk into without the help of other spirits, and I call it the Merc. And you need so many spirits to unlock certain areas. It's kind of how they progression gate you. Like, I couldn't get to the farm until I found two spirits. Yay! See, you got all kinds of fine inventory and stuff. Uh, 
some sort of spirits I've gotten. Here's my current quest. There's my guy and the different clothes I can get so far. So I have a couple of inventory slots left, so it's possible there could be a little bit of combat later, but I don't think so. Let's go to this one. Yeah, so I got 50 more quests. Let's see. This guy wants items, but I don't have any. So let's go over here. I don't have any ability to fish that I'm aware of. So I will follow my compass. So it says over here is where I gotta go. My celestial compass. Oh yeah, it's on the radar too. Hey, little doggy. Or a fox or something. I'll give us a fodder. He's going to like me now. Maybe he'll follow me with my friend. Got a question mark up here. Ah, more Merc. See, this is that Merc stuff. Let's see if I have enough power to clear. Ah, I only have three. I need six. Gold Lake, okay. Yeah, I need to get up the wall somehow. Stone, you know, for crafting it. Oh, I can't get there. There's probably another part that I can't get past, and I guess like six or twelve or something. Oh, no, I can't. And then here is the clear mark. My little spirits go, yay! And then I can progress. Oh, here's a little quest guy. Let's see what he's got. Pickaxe. Look at my precious ore, not just rocks. It's raining on me. Oh, this is interesting. It appears that this bridge is no longer in working order. No fall damage in the game, as you see. <laughs> I got an umbrella. And you know, I don't have any hit points or anything, so I'm fairly sure that this is a non combat game. This is an exploration, gathering, crafting type game. Which is cool. Kind of reminds me a little bit like Legend of Zelda. Uh, you know, Breath of the Wild, which is without any combat. And a lot more quests. Hmm. 
So then I had to join the carpenter's guild in order to maybe her way. Yeah, the boat's got a significant leak in it. So I have to join the carpenter's guild. Interesting. Compass doesn't tell me how to do that. Okay, so. Aww. Hey. Ah. So, there you go. As you see, there's lots of quests and lots of stuff to do because that's kind of the point of the game is you're kind of helping people out and doing stuff. But, anyhow. I could get wrapped up in the game and end up playing it for the next 30 years. And that's really not what we're about right now, right? Just a little taste. So that was Yonder. Uh, actually, Yonder the Cloud. Uh, what's it called? The Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Um, it's a pretty cool little game. Like I said, it looks pretty. Um, Needs stuff to run around and explore and do. Uh, lots of little quests. So check it out. Yes, definitely time to look at some loot crate. What we got served up on the loot crate this time? Well, we have a Rick and Morty statue with explicit content. Warning, explicit content. And why is it explicit? It's because, well, Rick is given the double deuce. Here you have Rick and his double deuce. I have a friend who desperately loves Rick and Morty that I will be giving this particular figure to you this time. Come on. Rick. And she's very happy for it. I told her that she could have it as soon as I was done showing off on the show. She was here just 15 minutes ago, and then she left, so she'll have to wait. We got some slurm koozies, two pack of slurm koozies. Keep that slurm can properly the right temperature. I don't know what temperature you drink slurm at. Is it warm? Is it cold? Maybe it's both. Depends on your race. Who knows? Got a pin, and this time it is a... Uh, a Bob's Burger pin, which is sweet. The uh, theme is animation, as it says. Love me some Bob's Burgers. Shirt is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles classic shirt. There's a turtle van. It's got kind of a turtle motif on it. Turtle van, turtle. Do, 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 do. Whoa, camera went crazy. So there's that. The magazine, of course. And then the thing they've been doing now, the secret order of key stuff that you do, you know, some little puzzles and you get like an extra little badge or something like that. Um, so that's cool. Oh, wait, what the heck is this? Some sort of schedule. Oh, it's just a, uh, Moving to a new format after this issue. You'll still receive a list of items you can never create, but the full guide. I guess they're going to stop printing this this thing out. They're going to stop printing the magazine and you can just go online and get it. Saving some costs. <laughs> Interesting, though. Um, this is the cool thing, I think, overall. Um, 
It is a uh, the Bob's Burger Burger Box. And what is the Bob's Burger Burger Box, you ask? Well, every episode of Bob's Burgers, sometimes more than once, they have a special um, burger of the day. And so the front has some fun little pictures, and the back is the recipe for the burger of the day in particular. This is Season 3, Episode 7, Tinosaurus Rex, and it's the Pickle My Funny Bone Burger. So this um, actually is a uh, recipe for how to make the burger of the day. And there are lots of them. Summertime burger, parsnip voo francais burger, one horse open slaw burger, season three. Season two, poutine on the Ritz. Rest in peas burger. Season 1, Episode 3, The Sacred Cow. Uh, so, that's pretty cool. It's, uh, and there, there, there's cards. I mean, like, if you really want to be like, what's the pop burger of the day that we're going to cook today? Because we're having burgers. I mean, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre Burger. Season 5, Episode 2. Onion, olive oil, ginger, garlic, red wine, brown sugar, tomatoes, beef, habaneros, fresh cheese curds, Four buns. Um, it's cards. Would I feel like it would be cooler if it was bound in a book or something? Yeah, I think so. I think I would prefer it in a book. Um, the cards are okay. I mean, it's kind of you know a shuffle and neat thing, but it would, I mean, it could be like a uh, you know a page number rolly randomness thing on it. Um, anyways, so. Uh, that was the loot crate this month. Overall, I liked it. The shirt was cool. The tur turtle shirt. The Rick statue was cool. Um, you know, it's pretty common that I'm not really that interested in the statues anymore. Um, the Rick statue was cool, especially because I know somebody who just absolutely love it. I'm not a big statue guy. I've got them all over the place already. I mean, you got, you know, got this guy over here. I got this guy over here. I got some of this guy over here. I got this guy over here. I'm starting to get a little overrun. Um, and they just keep coming. <laughs> I've got one of them back there, still packed up. So, um, I'm not really a fan of getting too many statues. They've been doing it almost every month, and I'd rather them do a little something different. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people like them, and a lot of people uh, love them because they just go on eBay and sell them. Because they're a collector, so they don't want to get a loot crate, but who'd be willing to pay $10? Or, you know, or so for just the statue. Especially, um, or looters trying to get the whole set when they release, like, one of four statues. So, we will call it here. Um, you know, I mean, we did, we did a lot today. We looked at Bears versus Babies. We looked at Loot Crate. Oh. We did forget one thing. Yes! Destiny 2 beta. Um... It's in full swing. Uh, and what can you do with it? If you hadn't heard, well, there's the first story mission. Um, then there are two different crucible modes. Uh, crucible is the PvP. And there is a strike. Let's start at the top with a story mission. It's long. It's meaty. And it sets the game up for, oh crap, what are we going to do now? Um, spoils are again for the beginning story mission, but it's all out there. Basically, um, it takes place after Destiny. One, you can be the same guardian that you were in terms of appearance. You're flying in and you go, hey, what's all heck? And basically the tower gets attacked by the Cabal. Um, attacked hard, like big time, wrecked everything. And the Cabal have this device that seals your light off from the Traveler. So the end of this story mission uh, they like seal the traveler off, so you lose all your superpowers. Your little ghost goes, uh, and you pick up your ghost, you're like, oh crap, and then he throws the ghost over the edge, punches you a bunch, and then kicks you off the edge, and you're, you're flying. So, I mean, well, the ghost is what brings you back to life when you die, so I don't know how this is going to end, what's going to happen, um, but you're not going to have any of your cool superpowers unless they do something else, and you can't regenerate. And that's how the story first story mission ends is on this huge cliffhanger. It's really a hype mission. 
to just really hype you up like, oh my god, I can't wait to play this game and play the story and find out what happens, which is cool. Because the first one started that way with a story, but it really died off. And we're hoping that this one here, you know, they, they learned a lot. They, I mean, Destiny, from vanilla to where it ended up, where it is right now, is so far ahead and it's so fun that if, if Destiny 2 can at least stay with what the current level is, which so far it feels like it's actually going to exceed, we can hope, then we'll have a good game. Um, the two PvP matches, there's Control, which was in the first one, um, but Control's got a lot of tweaks. Uh, for starters, all PvP matches now are, as far as team-based ones, are 4-on-4, four four. instead of 6-on-6 uh, or 8-on-6, 3-on-3, uh, six three three, that sort of stuff. There was a bunch of ones. I said that they're all going to be 4-on-4. Four four. Maybe there might be some 3-on-3 three three still, but I don't know. We'll see. Um... So control, the biggest changes in control is just there's less people, but there's still the same number of capture points. Um, they have changed how you capture somewhat in the game. You no longer, before, whenever you captured a point that was an enemy, you had to like dial down and turn off them and make the point neutral again, and then you could capture it. Well, they got rid of that where you just capture it. Um, but in, uh, to balance that, it doesn't matter how many guys you have on the flag, the capture speed is the same. In the first Destiny with Control, if you had three guys on there, the capture speed was nearly three times as fast. This time, it doesn't matter how many people you got on there, the capture speed is the capture speed. And the other play mode is a uh, is really cool. It's a, um, I guess you would call it asymmetrical, kind of, but not really. It's just an attacker-defender, really, is what it is. Um, and you take turns being the attacker, so there are three bomb points, and the attacker has to just detonate the bombs at one of the bomb points. Um, alternatively, you can kill the entire other team, because the only respawns are if your team member respawns you. So you can just do a wipe out the other team, um, or you can do a, you know, set the bomb off. And of course the defender's goal is to defuse the bomb, stop the bomb from going off, or, and kill the attacker. So you do that back and forth, and it's best uh, best of th five, I, I believe. So when you win three, you're good. Um, and that's, again, a 4v4. Now, the main change for both Crucible things, but especially in the bomb one, it seems like, is um, all the classes got a third power. Well, fourth, really. You have your melee attack, you have your grenade, you have your super. Uh, well, this one added a new power for all the classes, the uh, and the power has actually variants. The Warlock, which is the class I play the most, has a area effect that he can put down. And when you're in the area effect, you either get buff healed or your weapon attack goes up. Um, now, you will, if you play Destiny 1, know that this used to be what the Titan bubble did. That's gone away. The Titan doesn't have a bubble anymore, um, so the buffing has gone to the Warlock. Um, and the Titan has a shield. He can put down a big shield, boom. Or, the one I like, he can put down a shorter shield that's a bit wider uh, that lets you use the Destiny cover mechanic that they never really tell you about, but is there. If you duck behind something, you, you pull a weapon up, you know, you go up. So I, I like the cover shield, I think, a bit better than the uh, other one. But um, the... Big Shield, I can see, have other uses, such as blocking an entryway entirely, like they can't come in. Like, say you're trying to hold a bomb point and there's only two ways in. When you put the big Titan Shield up, boop, there, that's one entrance way that until it goes away, they can't get in. You can't walk through, you can't jump over. So, I can see the utility of either one. The Hunter, um, second, or third new power is a, uh, is not a team power. It's, uh, the dodge from the, uh, Shadow, uh, the Void. Um, Walker, or whatever he's called in uh, Hunter. I don't know. I, mean, I don't play Hunter so much, but the Void powers, he used to have the, the double tap to, to, to uh, shadow jump. Well, all Hunters have that now. And it can either instantly recharge his melee or instantly reload the guns. Uh, another change in Destiny 2 is the guns have kind of shuffled around. It's no longer primary, secondary, heavy. It's now uh, kinetic power, or sorry, kinetic energy and power. Kinetic are the regular guns, they would shoot regular rounds. Um, energy are basically the same guns that are in the kinetic field, but they have a um, modifier like either solar, void, or arc energy damage. 
And then power weapons are the old heavy with some additions. Uh, for example, shotguns and fusion rifles used to be secondary, and now they are in the power weapon slot, along with uh, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, um, that's sort of sniper rifles. So they have limited the use of those, especially in PvP, because uh, that, that ammo is harder to come by. It's, it's a lot more frequent now. The, uh, the power is more frequent than heavy in Destiny 1, but it, um, it definitely changes the dynamic quite a bit. Um, should be interesting. The strike is the final thing to talk about, and it is pretty cool. It's decent length. Um, there's some fallen and some new fallen types. If you kind of you could, they're they're not really a major focus of the strike this time, but you can find them. They're floating around. You can find some fallen, um, cabal, of course, which are the main focus, and there's some vex. Uh, new, especially near the end, it starts to get more vexy. And the boss uh, is really cool. He's a multi-phase boss like distinct really distinct phases um i mean he's worthy of of a uh of like a raid not necessarily maybe not a raid and boss but definitely one of the raid bosses of the game it's his mechanics kind of change how you fight him changes and the the overall fight theater the level where you're fighting him significantly changes it starts off in like this really closed room with pillars died behind and by the end you're in this huge open space with not as much cover at all when he's running around in between them. Um, and I mean, it goes to like three or four different scene changes. It's a pretty epic fight. It's pretty awesome. And I hope that the other strikes are as good. I mean, that's that's kind of my worry is that this thing is so awesome that are the other strikes going to be able to live up to it? Because it's the boss is, I mean, it's, it's better than any of the best game on strikes. Um, pretty much hands down. Um, what else is with the game? Overall, the game still feels about the same. It's solid. Some of the sound effects and some of the some of it, it feels a little tweaked. The jumping, um, especially with like the warlock, um, I haven't messed with the titans too much jumping to really need to know. Uh, the hunter feels about the same, but the warlock's jumping feels a little bit different. Um, it feels faster and more. Uh, the gun sounds have been modified, and they definitely they feel that the sound itself feels like it has more impact. Um, on the graphic front, the game looks prettier. You can tell that they didn't have to take any consideration for the PS3 or the Xbox 360 when they were building the, the core game engine, like they did for Destiny 1. So there's a lot more lighting effects and particle effects and smoke and, and the textures pop a little bit better. Um, they, they're a bit cleaner and you can just tell that this game was designed with the current generation of consoles. Um, and an eye toward the uh, step current generation with the uh, Xbox Scorpio 1Z, whatever, the new one coming out, and the PlayStation Pro. Uh, still 30 frames a second on the consoles. The PC is supposed to have unlocked frame rate. Um, that beta is who knows when, and it gets released uh, about a month after the consoles using uh, Blizzard's uh, platform, which is interesting. Can't wait for Sunday. Sunday is the last day of the beta, but at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, they will be opening up the social space, because the tower is gone. It was destroyed. So the new social space is called the farm, and not everything's going to work in the farm yet, but it'll give us a chance to look at it and kind of check it out. There's supposed to be like a soccer field that you can actually like play matches in, because the uh, number of guardians in it has been bumped up to like 20 or something like that, so you can technically play like soccer uh, with like score mechanics and all that crud. And it's supposed to be bigger, neater. We'll see how it goes. Overall, super hype. Destiny's my game. I've been kind of out of it for a little bit just because 2 is coming out. And I've been kind of you know, playing a lot of other stuff. There's so many games out there now. And my backlog is embarrassing. I've still got games. You can see behind me there's games there. Trust me. But behind the controllers. Some of them are still shrink wrapped. I haven't even had a chance to get to them yet. Uh, so. Well. Alright, enough fanboy gushing about Destiny 2. I like it a lot. It's going to be sweet. I can't wait. I'm starting on PS4. Maybe I'll get the PC version eventually, but I mean, my, I got a lot of PS4 friends um, that are just Destiny, so we'll have to see. September, man. It's early September. It's coming. Okay. Now, I think we call this done for the James Show.
Bears versus babies. Check. Talked about it. Uh, did some loot crates. That was cool. Doctor Who. Played some of our game. Um, and Destiny 2, of course. Full show. Uh, no song or whatever, because as I said, really need someone to, uh, to inspire me. And it's a little bit late for a lot of my people. No one's around to really give me some sort of inspiration. Maybe next time. So until then, this has been James of The James Show. Check me out. Uh, look for The James Show 00, zero um, at just about every social media outlet. That's two S's, two zeros, you know, uh, or thejameshow.com. Email me, james at thejameshow.com. Send me a tweet, the James Show zero, zero. Facebook, the James Show zero, zero. Google Plus, the James Show zero, zero. YouTube, the James Show zero, zero. I am. Lots of zeros, lots of shows. But, you know, drop me a line. I respond to pretty much everything that doesn't look like obvious spam, like, hi, I enjoyed your show. Please check out my link. And even some of them I respond back with, hey, thanks, maybe sometime. Until then, I'm James. Enjoy the audience. This has been my James Show. I'll see you next time.